Welcome back, YouTubers, to my NXT TakeOver Art Evolution review. On behalf of the British Fist, it's me, of course, Mr. Parkin. And oh boy, what an emotional roller coaster we were sent on tonight at this NXT TakeOver show. I'm still recovering from the main event of the show and that second hour, which I felt was really, really good. And probably the best hour of wrestling I've seen in quite some time in any company. I'm just saying. If you have any thoughts and comments on this show, please let me know down in the comment section below. I thought this was another good takeover show. Like I said, I thought the first hour was just okay, but it built up to that second hour, which I thought was really, really good. Balls to the wall action, drama, emotional, title changes, memorable moments. It just had, that second hour had exactly what you want from a wrestling show. Exactly the kind of thing that can make you stop being a cynic and start being a fan again. I had high expectations for this show, not just based off the previous TakeOver shows, but based on some of the matches and some of the moments we were going to get tonight, such as the Kevin Owens debut, etc., all the titles being on the line. I don't want to say this anymore. Let's just get reviewing this show. The first piece of big news that happened on this NXT TakeOver show actually happened on the pre-show when you had Corey Graves going on the panel to announce quite wholeheartedly that he had to retire from in-ring competition due to his health. We all know that Corey Graves has been off at the NXT TV show for quite some time now because he suffered a few concussions while in NXT. And while I was never really the biggest Corey Graves fan, I never really got into the gimmick that Corey Graves had personally. I never really got into his character. It's still quite upsetting to see that, you know, he's suffered from these concussions and it means he's going to have to retire from in-ring competition. And also, did anyone else notice how... He made a point or was probably told to make a point that the WWE doctors and wellness policy have really helped him through this. Right after CM Punk has just gone on, on Colt Cabana's podcast, you know, pretty much criticizing the WWE doctors. I found that I found that quite strategically placed here. But we also learned that he will now be part of the commentary team going forward, which obviously means now that Renee Young is going to be moved up to uh, the main announcing roster, I guess you'd call it. So that's a nice way for, you know, just a nice bit of news to keep Gory Graves on TV because, you know, he was, he was a decent talker. So let's see how good this guy is behind the announcer's desk. So we opened up this NXT TakeOver show with something that I've been very heavily anticipating over these last few weeks, and that was the debut of Kevin Steen, a.k.a. an NXT Kevin Owens. You know, I was really hyped to see if they were going to do something big with Kevin Owens on the show, maybe introduce him in a big way. I mean, these video packages they've been doing for him have suggested to me that they're going to try and do something big with this guy, maybe push him when he comes in. So I must admit, I was a little bit disappointed when I saw him essentially have an enhancement match with CJ Parker. But one positive I'll take from this is that we know we're going to get the Kevin Steen we all love and know. The Kevin Steen we saw in ROH, the Kevin Steen we were entertained by in ROH, and we're not going to be getting a pg fied version of Kevin Steen. So that's a good thing. I don't know why they didn't just have the squash match like last a minute, have him plow through CJ Parker. And did anyone else find it ironic also that he was bleeding in his nose, you know, on his debut when he beat CJ Parker? Kind of very Kevin Steen-esque, isn't it? But like, this is a very strong debut for Kevin Steen. I mean, he's gone through someone on the NXT roster that has previously been pushed on there. So a very good debut first match for Kevin Steen. Like I said, at the time, I was thinking, just a match with CJ Parker? Is that all we're going to see with Kevin Owens? Just wait till we see what we're going to talk about later then. The Lucha Dragons versus the Vorder Villains for the NXT Tag Team Championships was, I guess, a decent match which really didn't get enough time to be good. And, you know, this really surprised me, to be honest, because, you know, I feel like the, the Border Villains have been built up well to face the Looter Dragons and are legit opponents to the Looter Dragons. And I guess I had this match in my mind as the kind of match that would be really, really competitive. You'd have two tag teams that were on pretty much the same level. But really, I, I guess I thought this match was going to be much more than it was. And really, it was just there to be a showcase for the Lucha Dragons. You know what? And, and from that standpoint, it did what it needed to do. It showcased the Lucha Dragons, especially Kalisto. And I'm not surprised the Lucha Dragons went over here. And you know, I think the Lucha Dragons need the Tag Team Championships more, as I said in my preview, because I think you can do so much else with the Vaudy Villains that doesn't involve the Tag Team Championships. And they don't really need the Championships to stand out as characters, whereas the Lucha Dragons do. And did anyone else notice also that reference by Alex Riley of Kalisto in comparison to Rey Mysterio? You know, I don't think that was said by accident by Alex Riley. I think someone told him to say that 
on the old headsets, whoever's back there, because I think whoever's backstage in NXT really feels like Kalisto could be that next Rey Mysterio type character that could appeal to the, you know, to the Hispanics or the Latino audiences. As I guess most of us expected, Baron Corbin made his inevitable appearance on NXT TakeOver Our Evolution. He defeated Ty Dillinger in about 40 seconds, which is roughly double the amount of time it usually takes for him to dispatch of an opponent. You notice the crowd kept counting past 30, and as soon as they got past 30, they were all kind of disappointed that Baron Corbin didn't actually finish off the guy in at least 30 seconds, which is kind of funny if you think about it. You had Bull Dempsey looking on in the crowd, and I thought the way they were building this was, you know, for Bull Dempsey to face Baron Corbin at this show. I mean, this wasn't advertised, but I just assumed by the build-up that these two monsters would face off here, and it looks like now that... You know, this may happen on the NXT TV show, which is a real shame, really, because I thought this could have been, you know, a, a, a different kind of match on this show and added a little bit of variety, but we're not going to get it here. Um, a good spotlight for Baron Corbin once again. Uh, where they go with this feud now, I guess they'll face off next week, potentially, on the NXT show, and we'll get what really I feel should have been on this show on the NXT show, even though I guess maybe the thinking behind this was... We don't really have the time to add another match here, so we'll try and use this as a special attraction elsewhere. That's really all I can think of about that. Sometimes in wrestling, the highlight of a segment doesn't have to be something wrestling related. It doesn't have to be a wrestling move or the finish to a match. Sometimes it can be a well choreographed and very, very good entrance. And that is exactly what we got here with Finn Balor. With the entrance, with the body paint and the choreography. Man, that looked pretty damn cool. And that was really the highlight of this segment for me, just seeing this guy come out there with that body paint and that face mask or whatever the fuck it was. He had a headdress or whatever. I believe he did that in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, which I guess had a lot of internet fans jizzing their pants. But there we go. This tag team match between Hideo Itami and Finn Balor and the Ascension you know, was a pretty decent match. It really seemed in this match they were trying to spotlight Finn Balor you know, as Kenta or Hideo Itami really was just taking the beat down for most of the match. So it seems like NXT are really focusing on Finn Balor here, like he's going to be fast-tracked to the main roster at some point. And they just, after the CM Punk thing, they just had to tease the GTS with Kenta, didn't they? The fans popped for when Kenta lifted, lifted whoever it was up for the GTS, and then he got out of... But they had to tease the GTS, didn't they? Which was CM Punk's finisher in WWE. Uh, Itami and Finn Balor get the win with the double top rope foot stomp. You know, it seemed like what was an eternity heat segment, but the match did exactly what it needed to do. It put over Hideo Itami and Finn Balor in a big way, especially Finn Balor. And I guess now the question is, are the Ascension going to get called, to the, called up to the main roster soon? I mean, they put over two of the biggest talents in NXT now, and they've really proved themselves in that they can actually be in a long-term storyline in whatever way. And I think they've proved, proved to, the main, uh, to the officials now that they can actually be in the main roster, and hopefully they will be there soon. If, if that is the case, this is a very good swan song for them, because this feud between Hideo Itami and the Ascension, including Finn Balor, has been really, really good. I must admit, it was quite nice to see Superstar of the Year, Roman Reigns, on back on an NXT show. Basically, as a backstage segment with Rene Young saying he wants to be the first NXT alumni to win the WWE Championship. And you know what? He probably will. He'll probably come back, win the Royal Rumble, and defeat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania if Triple H gets his way over Vincent Mann. It was nice to see Roman Reigns back on NXT. And a nice little reminder there that and that the NXT brand and FCW in as well has created some stars for the WWE and hasn't been a failure as some people may say it has been in terms of creating new stars. Generally the semi-main event on these NXT TakeOver shows have gone to the NXT Women's Championship matches and generally they have delivered in a big way. Paige versus Emma delivered in a very big way, crowning the first NXT Women's Champion. Charlotte versus Natalia definitely delivered in a big way. Charlotte versus Bailey is another match that definitely delivered in a big way. And in Charlotte versus Sasha Banks, I feel like you have two characters here that could definitely deliver another great match to be, you know, part of that group of matches for the NXT Women's Championship that have delivered on these NXT TakeOver shows. And one of the big differences between NXT and WWE, which is another reason why I gravitate towards NXT, is the way they focus and put importance 
on women's wrestling. They give women time. They give them storylines. They give them characters. They make them stand out on these NXT shows. And the fact that they get the semi-main event on these TakeOver shows really just shows how much difference there is between NXT and WWE. And it really does make me think, you know, how the hell did WWE go wrong when they train these girls so well in developmental, thanks to, you know, Sarah Dore, etc., and the other people training the girls, like Bill DeMott, etc. And when they bring these girls up, you know, they're doing such great work on the developmental show, and when they bring them up, they don't do anything with them. You know, maybe it's because Vincent Mann doesn't value women's wrestling, and Triple H maybe has a different vision towards women's wrestling. I don't know, but I think it's a little bit pointless. One of the reasons why I stopped watching WWE well, it's, I think it's pretty pointless to have them do so well on the developmental show like Charlotte and Sasha Banks did here and so many other, you know, divas have done in the NSC roster and then bring them up and, you know, don't not really do too much with them. I mean, Paige, you could say, yeah, they've done a little bit of her, but like Emma, Summer Rae, you know, those two were two hot characters on NXT and they haven't really done anything with them. A little bit of a shame. They even had Charlotte go on and lose to Natalia on Raw this week. You know, how silly is that? But like I said, it takes nothing away from the fact that Charlotte and Sasha Banks definitely delivered it tonight. You know, they killed it in the ring. They put on another good women's championship match. A gr actually, you could call it a great women's championship match that is definitely on par. Maybe not quite there, but was definitely on par or near to on par to Paige versus Emma, Charlotte versus Natalia. And Charlotte versus Bailey. I'd probably say it was on the same level as Charlotte versus Bailey, but it was another really good women's championship match and definitely delivered in the semi main event. Charlotte wins with the natural selection from the top rope. I was a little bit surprised Charlotte won here, as I thought they may bring her up soon. And I thought Sasha Banks was, you know, definitely the next best person to take the title from her. So it'd be interesting to see where they go with Charlotte next. What, you know, challenger they give her. You know, who knows? But these two girls delivered another very good women's championship match, and that really goes a long way in the way I grade these shows. And then we get to our main event of the evening, which was Sami Zayn versus Adrian Neville for the NXT Championship in pro is probably the biggest match NXT have ever done. I mean, a lot of people make point at Bo Dallas versus Adrian Neville in a ladder match and say, you know, that was the biggest match that NXT have done. But in my opinion, Adrian Neville is the long reigning champion and Sami Zayn is the gutsy challenger that's been going at it for months and years, etc. Is the best combination and in my opinion is the best storyline and is are the best two people to headline a big NXT show. And that's exactly what they did here. NXT did a very good job of making this feel like a main event. They had the whole show kind of build up like a funnel towards this big main event. They gave this segment plenty of time. They gave them backstage promos. They did the ring announcing to introduce them, etc. And the crowd was going fucking nuts for Sami Zayn before the match started. You could tell the crowd really wanted Sami Zayn to finally win the big one, didn't you? And to be honest, I ran out of words to describe this match. I mean, it was, you know, real, really fast. It started off slow. It got faster as it went on. It kind of felt like a bit of an independent match to me. You know, but with added storytelling and psychology in there, which is what you expect to see from the WWE. You know, words to describe this match. Emotional, hard-hitting, drama. I mean, I think they told the story really well near the end of the match of Sami Zayn battling his morals with his goals for success, especially when he when he was holding the belt. And, he, you know, he was kind of tempted. Should he use the belt? Should he do it the right way? I felt that was some real, real good storytelling there. And then Sami Zayn. You know, I've, I've been there from day one with Sami Zayn. I mean, I watched him on ROH. Thought he was a good talent. He came to NXT and he's missed out and missed out and kept missing out, similar to Daniel Bryan. And to be there when Sami Zayn finally has that moment where he finally, finally wins the big one was a great moment for me. You know, like I, like I said, I've been, I've been there since he first started in NXT and I've been wondering when, when, when are they going to put the belt on Sami Zayn? Why aren't they putting the belt on Sami Zayn? Now it's got to the point where they finally have an eye marked out big time. One of my biggest mark out moments of recent memory. It's the best way I can put it. Sami Zayn finally winning the big one. That was memorable to me. That was a real, real, real good way to end the show, in my opinion. A really good match between Neville and Zayn, as we knew it, as we knew it would be. And a great moment for Sami Zayn finally, finally winning the big one. 
And then uh, what I liked about this is the way they hung on this for 10 minutes. They didn't just go away from it. They hung on it for 10 minutes. They had the whole roster coming out. They have Kevin Owens, as they've said before, his close personal friend being the first to hug him. Neville giving his respect, etc. And you knew it was memorable in itself. But you knew the way they were really hanging on to this segment for 10 or so minutes that something was going to happen. Something was up. And you knew something was up with the way they had Kevin Owens out there. And boy, did we have another memorable moment to end this show when we have Kevin Owens turning on Sami Zayn and giving him the brutal apron power. Now, I know we've seen this feud in ROH and they've kind of fast-tracked this a little bit here. We've only just seen Kevin Owens as a babyface. Now he's finally turned heel. But what a way to introduce not just Sami Zayn as an NXT champion and, you know, a top guy on NXT, you know, a guy who deserved it and worked his way up there, etc., but what a way to introduce Kevin Owens onto the scene by going after the, the newly crowned NXT champion. So we've had a memorable moment in Sami Zayn winning the belt, and now we have a reason to tune into NXT next Thursday. So from that standpoint, the main event did everything it needed to do. It, in, it gave Sami Zayn his big win, gave us a memorable moment there, a really, really good match, has now introduced Kevin Owens as probably the top heel on NXT right now and giving us a reason to tune in next Thursday. Bam, done. That's this main event did everything it needed to do. A very, very good main event, a very memorable way to win this show for two reasons. For Sami Zayn finally winning the big one and the big Kevin Owens turn, which will probably be the big talking point, of course, of this NXT show. I'm gonna give my overall thoughts on this show now, guys. Whew. So my overall thoughts on NXT TakeOver Our Evolution. It's pretty simple, really. Much like the previous TakeOver shows, I really enjoyed it. It was another show which made me feel like a fan again. And not a critic, cynical fan, but an actual casual fan. And it takes a lot for WWE to actually do that to me. And this is one of the reasons why, I will, why I've stuck with the NXT product for as long as I have, and why I've tuned out of the WWE product. Because the WWE product, Raw and SmackDown and pay-per-views, just don't give me the feeling that NXT does, that excitement, that excitement as a fan. And I always look forward to watching these shows, as you guys know, and they always seem to deliver. You know, I felt firstly the pacing of, and flow of the show. While the first hour wasn't very good, it was still good enough to provide me with some moments and to keep me entertained. Like I said, provide that upward funnel towards that big main event we were going to get at the end, which is going to provide the talking point. So the flow of the show was very good. The production on this show... I thought was also very good with video packages, backstage promos, the pre-show I thought was very good. We had some very good matches on this show. You know, some the right guys were put over on this show. Baron Corbin was spotlighted, as I feel he definitely should be. I think, you know, Hideo Itami and Finn Balor have been put over as big stars. The women once again showed that they were, you know, putting on fucking great matches. Charlotte is definitely looking like a star. Sasha Banks is looking like, you know, a very good heel on NXT right now. And that main event segment, guys, you know, nothing beats a memorable main event, a memorable last 40 minutes to half an hour of a special event. Sam seeing Sami Zayn wrestle Adrian Neville in a very good match, not really even about the match, about Sami Zayn finally getting that moment where he wins the big one. And then seeing Kevin Owens, seeing WWE, NXT, introducing Kevin Owens in the way they did and having go after Sami Zayn and give us a reason to tune into NXT on Thursday. This show really did everything it needed to do. I don't think it was on par with maybe, you know, some of the previous takeovers, maybe because of that first hour, but that second hour, you'd be pressed to find a better hour of wrestling this year in quite a few years, if, if I'm honest with, if I'm honest with you. So let me know your thoughts on NXT Takeover I Evolution down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I can't fucking wait to watch Kevin Owens now. Whatever they're gonna do with him, I hear they're gonna do an interview with him on NXT next week. It's gonna be good. See you next week, guys.